Good evening. This is Edward with SonsOfGod.com, and it's the uh, 9th of April, 9th of April, 2022. We're going to take a stab at something that um, recently experienced, and <clears throat> it's opening up a, a level of... Um, of understanding that uh, I don't know that we've we've seen. I mean, I, I certainly haven't quite seen it. So we bless the word tonight, uh, Lord. You, this is your mic, and um, speak to us as you will. You know, we're in a very odd time. There are so many things going on. So many things that can draw your attention and your focus and uh, are really huge distractions. We know that we're in the time of judgment. We know that we're in the time that God is exposing the evil. And he's exposing that which is being done behind closed doors. And... It can be difficult not to feel empathy for what is unfolding in the earth. You know, as you see millions of people going through a lot of things, whether it's the war in Ukraine or the COVID-19, uh, I don't know what to call it, fallacy, uh, but there's uh, many levels that are unfolding right now. And this is all in the timing of the Lord. And I believe that we understand that. You know, when you stop and you try and put legs to a scripture and really understand firsthand what the scripture is really saying, you know, it's really different than just having an idea. You know, you can talk about tribulation and or judgments uh, upon the people of the earth and the satanic powers, but there's still concepts, there's still statements and words until you experience it and your eyes are opened and it stops being just um, another concept that you've spoken or heard of many, many times. Uh, but the, the, the gut reality of it is so much different because it's, it's literally up close and personal. Uh, and that's what we're dealing with right now. Many layers of, of events that are unfolding, many to come, and, and it's going to be a lot worse than it is now. You know, the Ukraine in, uh, uh, well, in proportion is really a very small thing of what is going to happen uh, and what is really beginning to unfold. so it's it, it's just we have to be careful not to get too caught up, and um, and we have to be careful to let let things run their course, unless the Lord speaks specifically and said, you know, I want you to prophesy against this or prophesy against that. Otherwise, <clears throat> in some ways, our hands are tied, waiting to see what is going to unfold as the Lord. He executes the judgments that are written. The psalmist, you know, says it. The, the, I think it's the last psalm, you know, about executing the judgments that are written. The judgments that are happening and are going to happen are already done. It's, it's already been written. And we're in the midst of watching it unfold. And it cannot seem fair it, it can, you know, it, it just doesn't, you know, seem fair, uh, or the whole idea of 
God is love, and yet you see the massive devastation that's just beginning. And Anne and I have seen what is coming from what the Lord has revealed to us over the year, and it's going to be, you know, so much worse. Um, but it's during this climate of upheaval that the kingdom is being born and that the sons of God are being born. You know, it's the birthing of the sons. It's the birthing of the kingdom. And, of course, it will come, you know, in a time of great duress and chaos, which is where we are, a time of great deception, until you look at something and, and you honestly, unless you have revelation, you cannot pin your hat and say, well, this is what's happening. This is what the news said. This is what I saw a picture of. And not realize that perhaps some of it's true, perhaps a lot of it's manipulated, um, but you can't trust in what your eyes see or the conclusion your mind comes to because that's part of the manipulation that's going on. So <clears throat> with that said, we we just keep an open mind before the Lord. Um so that, as is needed, God can reveal, you know, what is happening, uh, and perhaps why it is happening. And um, because, like I said, there's many levels that overlap during this time, many levels of reality uh, from the world of spirit and the world of the natural um, it, it, things are not what they appear. Um, and that's just how, how it has been. But <clears throat> what we want to talk, talk about tonight has to do with the, oh, I would say, I think it's the, in the book of Peter. Let's see here. Um, Let me find it. If not, I'll just randomly quote it. Well, I had it said, I had it to Mark, but you know what? It's okay. We've quoted it so many times. But uh, in the book of um, Peter, it talks about God's calling upon the sons during this time, and that he's chosen a people for his own possession, and that this is the time where God is sanctifying the sons, you know, purifying them, making them blameless, spirit, soul, and body at the coming of the Lord. And it's this season of the presence of Perusia of the Lord that is happening, that we are in the throes of changes that it's very difficult to explain because uh, we haven't really walked this way. We can try and, and put a finger on it, but it can be challenging. But... And we've had a tendency, as I was telling Anne, to listen to scriptures and form a concept of what they think, an idea, and and that's about as far as it goes, unless God brings you into an experience of that scripture where it ceases to be letters on a page, but it begins to become something that has taken up root and residence within you. The, you know, in Peter it talks about a people for God's own possession. And in the midst of this chaos that's coming, God is taking up his full abode within the sons. And we've been talking about that off and on now for months. 
that it's you know it's the indwelling of the Godhead within the sons. It's the absolute penetration of God in man. It's a oneness that we haven't seen before this time, except in what the Lord walked himself. And that level of experience or oneness is beginning to uh, take hold within the hearts of God's people. Um, it may be difficult at first to identify it, but this is part of what's unfolding right now. In the midst, you, know, you say, well, the, the, you know, the, the, the woman is giving birth, and the man, the, uh, the satanic seed, is seeking to devour, but he you know, does not do so, is not able to. And the sons come to birth. And in that birthing, it goes hand in hand with the deep interpenetration of God in man until you, you can't look at the son that is birthed and identify to him or her as you ever have in the past because that individual seeks to be or, or ceases to be uh, just the manifestation of a unique soul or a unique spirit with um, uh, divine attributes uh, or anointings, but that individual becomes the uh, incarnate of God, becomes the dwelling place of God, becomes the living temple of God. And we're in the midst of that. Uh, however slow it may seem to be going, we're in the midst of that. The indwelling uh, and the taking up of God's presence. And, and that's, you know, pursuant to his word. He seeks a people for his own possession. And so, you know, you stop and think about that. Um, try and get a, try and wrap your head around it. Uh, God seeks to indwell us, to take his abode up within us, to possess us, really, is, is the word. God seeks a people for his own possession. What does that mean? And how far are we into this? I know for some time the Lord has said, you're so much further into the kingdom than you know. So much further down the road than you're able to recognize. And so we still see ourselves as, you know, uh, not there, uh, half God, half human, whatever we are in the process. But the truth is that God is taking up his abode. So what, what happens as this is taking place? Does anything happen? Or is it just a revelation of something, another promise that we hang our hat on? You know, what does that scripture mean? You know, and, and we can't turn away from the reality that for God to take up his abode within his people, his chosen royal priesthood has a great deal of meaning during this time in the earth. It's more than just having your eyes opened. It's more than beginning to understand more and get more revelation and more leading. It has to do with the total possession of God's sons by the Father himself. And you can't separate God from from you, you from God becomes, because it becomes an interblending. And so there are windows of time or windows of experience that are happening during this time where God is totally taking up his abode within the sons that we can see 
telltale signs of uh, of change, of things that we haven't recognized before that are happening within us, happening to us. And it's something that we need to to be reaching in for and to be expecting. The attributes of the Father are not attributes like gifts of the Holy Spirit, but they're attributes that you become. You know, like he said many years ago, you are judgment. You know, you are healing, you are deliverance. And you stop and think about what that means. You know, what did I do to become healing, to become judgment? Is that uh, like a um, church age gift of the Spirit? Now you have gift of healings, you have gift of tongues, and all the various gifts that came during the church age. Not at all, because in the day of the kingdom, it's the day of spirit. And the change that's happening within the sons is permanent. And it has everything to do with the indwelling of the Father. And they're like signposts along the way of how close you're becoming in this transition from soul to spirit. When you think of the attributes of the Father, you have to think in terms of what you're becoming because you're becoming those very attributes. Not necessarily by virtue of the work of the cross or anything else, but only by virtue of the fact that he has chosen to take up his abode within you. And as he does, you're changing. We're changing. I was reading Philippians 4 this morning because something came through the night hours that was unlike anything I've seen before. Um, and the Lord led me to Philippians 4, 7. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ. And I began to, to understand that in this transition where God begins to take up his abode, your body is changing with that. It has to change. Your awareness is changing. Your eyes are opening. Things are changing. And it's important that we expect and anticipate because we don't know exactly how it's all going to manifest. I can say this morning, I awoke around two and I immediately was aware of the presence of God within me, but it manifested differently because it was this wave of peace that overshadowed me. And it was more than just feeling the peace of God, but it was feeling his presence and one of the many aspects that we will f discover in this total possession that is happening. It wasn't just a, you know, I feel peace about everything. The world's in chaos. Everything is in chaos. And um, and then all of a sudden, a wave of peace comes over you. And, you know, everything goes back into proper perspective. This was different because it was the presence of God. It was the overlapping 
for the sake of a better word, where all of a sudden you realize the this process that we've been in, in the takeover, the great takeover as we've called it, where God is taking, taking over his sons, where he is beginning to totally possess them, is further in the process and in play right now than we understand. And there's going to be more and more experiences as we push deeper in that will be a, a signpost, if you will, of how deeply the presence of God has taken up his abode within the sons. You know, how do you measure it? It's difficult to measure unless you're really aware of the indwelling that is happening. So this is a short meditation this evening. It's hard to impart uh, something that is um, like this. But suffice it to say that we're, we're in a transition. And our awareness is opening up of the indwelling of God that is already within us. The oneness of God that is within us and the attributes of the Father that are already within us. And the greater this takeover gains momentum, the more and more we find that God has taken up his permanent abode within each of the sons. Like Christ said, so it's, it's not I that live, or it's Paul, I think, but Christ within me. That ceases to be another scripture, but that becomes something that you're living and you're experiencing firsthand because it's that real, and you can feel the difference. The Lord has many different ways of confirming what he's doing and where he's at within each of God, uh, each of his people, uh, d d different ones are at different places in their maturing, in their growth, and in their laying aside of the carnal mind and, you know, uh, the Adamic nature. But we should be expecting a lot more in the appearances of God because this is the window of time <clears throat> where the, the word has come to speak about the days of the Perusia, to speak about the time when God fully takes up his abode in a people. And we'll see. I mean, this was prophesied to come many years ago, that during the times of judgment will be the release of the sons. It will be a time of judgment upon that which is fed off their lives. And that which is fed off of your life is being brought under judgment. The world scene is um, intensifying. <clears throat> but we don't want to get too caught up in what's going on. Because what you see is not what is. Is, is there judgment in the earth? Yes. Are people dying? Yes. Will many more die? Yes. But what is God doing? He is bringing forth his sons. And incrementally, they're changing. Line upon line, you know, uh, just changing gradually changing, and sometimes it can be very difficult to identify the change because you, you've you been with yourself for so long to separate it out and say, this is, this is different. Something has changed here. I've laid aside the old man on a deeper level, and the indwelling of God has come. 
So anyway, Anne and I send our blessings. Just an evening meditation for a Saturday evening. And we'll continue to look to the Lord because this is the time for change. It's the time for change. It's the time that the worm becomes a butterfly. It's the time that the sons of God are to undergo the changes that they've been destined to experience. It's time that the scriptures cease to be concepts or ideas that we know and believe, but they become very real experiences until there'll be a time in the future when someone might say, what is it like to go through the process of, son process of sonship? And you will know because you were there walking it out step by step. So with that, we send our blessing, and we'll talk to you again soon. Amen.